the stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, I am taking a look at William Yorick, the uh, new investigator for the Survivor class from the Path to Carcosa Deluxe expansion. Uh, just a note before I get started, I have received several requests uh, to, do, to do deck tech episodes for the investigators from the Corset and uh, the Dunwich Legacy uh, Deluxe Expansion, and I just wanted to let everybody know that I am planning to do those next, uh, time permitting. And for those of you who enjoy uh, my playthroughs, I'm going to be kicking off my Carcosa campaigns here shortly, so uh, keep an eye out for those. I haven't really decided whether I'm going to just do them... Uh, play the investigators solo or two-handed, or even uh, which investigators I'm planning to play. So if you uh, have a preference, by all means, leave a comment down below, and uh, we'll get those uh, started for you. So I am going to wrap up my look at uh, the uh, Carcosa investigators with uh, William York. Uh, will this actor turn to Gravedigger live to see the curtain fall, or will the degenerate creatures that feed on the dead add York to the menu? There are uh, spoilers throughout if you care about that sort of thing, so with that in mind, uh, let's get started. William Yorick has three willpower, two intellect, four combat, and three agility. He has the warden trait, eight health, and six sanity. He has the response trigger, after you defeat an enemy, play an asset from your discard pile, paying its cost. Limit once per round. Yorick's elder sign effect is plus two. And uh, if the test is successful, you may return one card from your discard pile to your hand. Now, William York's stats are similar, those, similar to those of his uh, Survivor counterparts, Wendy Adams from the core set and uh, Ashcan Pete from the Dunwich Legacy. He's got the lowest willpower of the bunch at three, and his intellect of two is uh, really nothing to write home about. He is the strongest Survivor with a combat of four. Uh, but uh, we do know that Ash can, can also reach a 4 with, uh, with Duke. And uh, York's agility is a fairly average 3. He's got the highest health of uh, the survivors at 8, and his sanity is a uh, very respectable 6. Obviously, York has uh, combat covered, although his uh, intellect of 2 is always going to be a concern. I, uh, I realize I'm starting to sound a little bit like a broken record here, but it's, uh, it's a real big disadvantage to have a low intellect in this game. Anybody who has played Curtain Call solo will understand just how difficult it can be to, uh, to pass those investigate still skill tests with an intellect of two when the uh, shroud value of those locations creeps up to three or four. Many of the game's uh, parlay tests also key off the uh, intellect trait. And if you fail enough of those skill tests, you're uh, going to quickly find yourself locked out of scenarios. Or in the uh, the case of Curtain Call, you might find yourself just going going insane. Now, York has uh, many tools at his disposal to help him discover clues. In the core set, uh, there are cards like Evidence, in the Guardian class, Look What I Found, Lucky, and Flashlight, as well as the neutral skill cards Perception and uh, Unexpected Courage. I uh, quite like the idea of playing Evidence in York since he uh, since it comes with two intellect skill icons and it does reward him for doing something he already wants to do, which is uh, killing enemies. If you've picked up the uh, Essex County Express and uh, Undimensioned and Unseen Mythos packs, you can add uh, Newspaper and Dark Horse to your list of options. Newspaper, it, uh, it only provides a temporary intellect boost and uh, its overall effectiveness really depends on the scenario you're playing. If you're playing a scenario where you're you're spending those clues as quickly as you get them, newspaper can be viable, but in those scenarios where you have to hang on to them for a while, it uh, you're not going to get that plus two in intellect bonus very often. Dark Horse, on the other hand, can be uh, pretty obscene if you keep your cost curve uh, of your deck low enough. That said, I'm not entirely certain that uh, Dark Horse is viable in Yorick, since it doesn't really jive with uh, his response trigger. If uh, Yorick wants to play assets from the discard pile, he's going to need uh, the resources to pay for them, which uh, really runs counter what, to what uh, Dark Horse is trying to do. Meanwhile, the, uh, the Path to Carcosa Deluxe Expansion includes two cards that were really custom-made for Yorick, the uh, Lantern and the Gravedigger Shovel. 
Lantern operates similar to flashlight. Uh, it reduces the shroud value of locations by only one rather than two like the flashlight, but it doesn't run out of batteries either, so it's a, it is a permanent reduction. And uh, it also comes with the, the handy option of discarding it to damage an enemy. Yorick can discard the Gravedigger Shovel to grab a clue without making a skill check. And the uh, so the ability to damage enemies and discover clues without making skill tests is very powerful, especially on higher levels of difficulty. While most investigators would hesitate to discard assets, Yorick can simply replay them with his special ability, and that's uh, that's great. It, I would be uh, remiss if I didn't mention one card from the upcoming uh, Echoes of the Past, Past Mythos pack. Uh, once Yorick gains an experience point or two, he can always add Plucky to his deck, which enables him to spend resources to boost his willpower or intellect. Uh, you may have to discard the Plucky if you take a, a non-direct horror, but again, if Yorick defeats an enemy, he can simply replay it from his discard pile for one resource. Now, I don't think Plucky is going to be an, an auto-include in, in Yorick decks, since he doesn't have many ways to generate extra resources to spend on a card like Plucky, but it's it's certainly worth considering if you find yourself struggling to come up with enough intellect icons to pass those skill tests. Now Yorick really lives to, de to uh, defeat enemies, and there are plenty of cards in the Survivor and Guardian classes to help him do just that. The Guardian card pool in the core set contains the 45 automatic, beat cop, uh, dynamite blast, guard dog, machete, physical training, and vicious blow while the survivor card pool chips in with the uh, the trusty baseball bat, or not trusty, depending on uh, which token you pull from the, the chaos bag. And, uh, you know, if combat goes sideways, Yorick can always play dodge to uh, cancel an attack. Now, uh, don't forget the, uh, the lowly knife from the core set either. Yorick's ability to play assets from the discard pile means he's, uh, he's really uniquely positioned to go on a stabbing spree you can discard the knife to gain plus two combat and plus one damage, and if you happen to defeat the enemy, you can replay the knife from your discard pile for one resource. That is uh, pretty sweet. So uh, who knows, maybe the designers will create an investigator who can uh, do for the Kukri what they've done for the knife. That <laughs> I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but it uh, would certainly be interesting. If you uh, own the Dunwich Legacy Big Box, Yorick can take the Fire Axe, which is among the best weapons in the game. And uh, the Path to Carcosa Big Box comes with the uh, 32 Colt. Although I think if you want uh, Yorick to pack some heat, the 45 Automatic is probably a better option, since it comes with a combat boost in addition to the damage bonus. Uh, because Yorick's uh, combat is only 4. Uh, the 32 Colt really is is a weapon for Mark Harrigan with his his high combat of five. Uh, there's also the aforementioned lantern and gravedigger shovel if you uh, want to take out take out those enemies. Yorick is a uh, survivor at heart, so evasion is certainly a viable option given the uh, card pool. Although it does it does run counter to what Yorick is trying to do. If you want to buff Yorick's agility, there's always Peter Sylvester from the Dunwich Legacy cycle. He is, uh, Sylvester is one of the most powerful allies in the game at the moment, and his response would certainly help shore up Yorick's sanity if he's ta taking on a lot of enemies. Uh, I, I know from personal experience that uh, Sylvester and uh, his level 2 version in particular have saved my bacon more times than I can count. Uh, other evasion options include uh, Cunning Distraction, Stray Cat, uh, you've got uh, Survival Instinct and Bait and Switch as well. Now, I doubt many of these cards are going to see much play in York. Uh, you know, a little evasion can always be helpful in a pinch, but I think if you're interested in playing a hardcore evasion deck, yeah, you probably should consider playing a different investigator. York's uh, special ability is exceptionally powerful, and it opens up all sorts of deck building options for players to explore. Uh, once per round, after York defeats an enemy, he may play an asset from the discard pile, paying its cost. And uh, that's any asset. That's just not assets from the survivor class. So uh, don't get tunnel vision and think that you can just play a survivor asset. That's any asset from, uh, from any class he has access to. 
Now, uh, I've already mentioned Knife as uh, one potential target for Yorick's ability, but uh, there's so many more that it can be, uh, it can actually be quite challenging to uh, decide which one to include in your deck. Players have already been experimenting with cards like the, the Guard Dog, the Beat Cop, uh, Police Badge to gain extra actions, Leather Coat, uh, Baseball Bat, the Lantern, the Gravedigger Shovel, and Fine Clothes. I've uh, even heard of a couple players who have uh, been trying to use Yorick's ability to abuse the Red Gloved Man from uh, Lost in Time and Space Mythos Pack. And uh, Echoes of the Past, the, uh, the first Mythos Pack in the Path to Caracosa cycle, includes a new toy for Yorick to uh, bring back from the discard pile, the uh, Cherished Keepsake. It, uh, it might be uh, Wendy's teddy bear, but I think Yorick is uh, extremely well positioned to, to abuse that card going forward. Now, the, uh, the ability to play assets from your discard pile is, is really amazing, but I think it's balanced by the fact that Yorick uh, needs to pay the cost of that asset. And uh, unfortunately for Yorick, grave digging isn't a very lucrative profession. Uh, York's resource generation options are pretty limited. Uh, you can ta basically take an action to gain a resource. You can play emergency cash, and uh, once he gains a few experience points, uh, you can uh, take that ever vigilant. Now, uh, York doesn't have a lot of income rolling in, so you're going to want to prior prioritize those uh, cheaper assets, such as the leather coat and cherished keepsake, when you're building your York deck. I think the idea of having an, an unlimited supply of uh, beat cops coming to your rescue is pretty appealing, but uh, that's going to get very expensive very fast as you try to pay for those uh, if you're recurring them, uh, if you're trying to recur them too often. Now, uh, Yorick's ability is uh, very powerful, but it can also trip up some players because uh, it does. You do have to trigger it during a specific timing window. If you uh, look at the skill test timing chart on page 26 of the rules reference, enemies are usually defeated uh, when you apply the skill test results in step 7. Uh, this also happens to be the step when you would trigger Yorick's response. However, the, uh, the cards that you commit to a combat skill test don't enter Yorick's discard pile until step 8 uh, when the skill test ends. That means Yorick cannot trigger his response to target a card committed to a skill test since the uh, the window of opportunity has already passed. This uh, situation also applies if you happen to break your baseball bat during an attack since the baseball bat isn't discarded until step 8. Uh, you won't have a chance to pull back a card you committed to a skill test if you draw an elder sign either since uh, that effect results during step 6 when you determine the success or failure of a skill test. Now, York can target cards that are uh, discarded as part of their cost because they've already entered the discard pile by the time York triggers his response during step 7. And uh, this is the reason you can throw your knife at an enemy, then pay one resource to return the knife to play if that enemy dies. Yeah, the same is true of cards like Beat Cop, which you could trigger during the uh, player window between step uh, 1 and 2, or step 3 and 4. And it uh, it also works if you happen to discard your lantern to uh, damage an, uh, to damage an enemy. Yorick's elder sign effect is uh, is also pretty powerful. In fact, it's uh, probably one of the best in the game. The ability re to return any card in your discard pile to your hand is uh, absolutely fantastic because it can provide uh, an answer to just about any problem that you're facing. Obviously, the uh, the card you pick will depend a lot on the board state at the time, but you really can't go wrong recycling a lucky or look what I found a couple extra times a game. Uh, if you happen to be running shy on resources, emergency cash is also is also a great target. And uh, but like I said, it it really depends on your board state and uh, what you happen to need at the time. In terms of deck building, York uh, he follows the template established by the investigators in the core set. He has the uh, standard deck size of 30 cards, and he can include any survivor or neutral card, as well as cards from the uh, Guardian class, levels 0 to 2. Now, I've already mentioned uh, several ways Yorick can combine the uh, survivor and Guardian cards to boost his combat and investigation, so I won't uh, go over that again here. I uh, would like to note, though, that the uh, Guardian class contains a lot of cards that are great in multiplayer, 
and uh, if you couple those car couple those cards with assets from the survivor class that give York extra health and sanity, you've uh, you've got the makings of a very potent tank who can take a ton of punishment and uh, dish out a fair amount of uh, pain in return as well. So if you're looking at uh, playing at York in multiplayer, you could certainly uh, take a closer look at some of those cards to uh, to boost his his utility. York signature cards are Bury Them Deep and uh, Graveyard Ghouls, respectively. Bury Them Deep is a uh, zero-cost event with willpower combat and wild skill icons and uh, the task trait. It has the game text fast. Play after a non-elite enemy at your location is defeated. Add that enemy and this card to the victory di display and uh, Bury Them Deep is also worth one victory point. Uh, signature cards don't get much more straightforward than uh, Bury Them Deep. You kill a non-elite enemy, play the card for free, and uh, score a victory point. Simple as that. Uh, if you're playing in multiplayer, you don't even have to be the one who killed the enemy. You don't have to kill it yourself. You just need to be uh, at the location when it happens. Uh, you can also play this card if you kill an enemy worth a victory point uh, to double dip on those victory points. And uh, in most scenarios, you should have plenty of opportunity to play this card. Uh, the only question is whether you will uh, draw it in time. Now, uh, if uh, you happen to play this card to, uh, if you can play Bury Them Deep to remove a really annoying enemy from the game before the encounter deck reshuffles, uh, even better. I'm uh, thinking of the conglomeration of spheres that starts in play during uh, where Doom awaits, for example. If you can draw Bury Them Deep early enough, you could play it uh, to remove that sucker from the game before the encounter deck reshuffles, in, which which would ensure you don't have to kill that damn thing more than once uh, per game. Uh, any of you who have watched my playthrough of that uh, with Mark Harrigan will know how uh, annoying those conglomerations can be. Now, it is, it is going to be difficult to set up that kind of play in most scenarios because... Uh, uh, you'll need to draw that particular enemy and happen to have bury, to de bury them deep in your hand at that time. But it, it's certainly a nice bonus if you can pull it off. Uh, I can't really imagine myself ever uh, discarding bury them deep to a skill test un uh, unless, of course, I'm playing a scenario like Miskatonic Museum, which only has one elite enemy, or uh, the game hinges on passing the next skill test. Uh, any way to earn extra victory points is always welcome because uh, they can really add up over the course of a campaign. Now, York's signature weakness is uh, Graveyard Ghouls. It's an enemy with three combat, three health, and two agility. It has the humanoid monster and ghoul traits. The uh, ghouls are hunters that only prey on York, and it has the game text. While Graveyard Ghouls is engaged with you, cards cannot leave your discard pile. And uh, if they happen to sneak an attack through, you're going to lose one health and one sanity. Now this is the uh, the first signature enemy weakness in the game, and uh, Graveyard Ghouls is an uh, is uh, an irritating little enemy that uh, that basically blanks York's text box. As uh, with the uh, enemy weaknesses in the core set, the ghouls are designed to distract York and uh, tax out his actions. York shouldn't have much trouble dispatching the ghouls uh, raiding corpses in his graveyard, but uh, he's going to have to take an action or two to do it, and those are actions that uh, you could use to help you uh, beat the scenario. I've run into the ghouls a few times uh, while playing York, and, and honestly, I haven't found them to be that bad. Blanking York's text box uh, doesn't really do anything unless you happen to have pitched all your weapons into the discard pile and... Uh, if you've done that, <laughs> admit it, uh, you probably deserve to lose the game at that point. Uh, as with the other enemy weaknesses, uh, Graveyard Ghouls really comes down to a matter of timing. If you draw the ghouls uh, toward the end of your turn, you're probably going to get tagged for a health and a sanity unless you've got an action left to evade them. If you're uh, well armed, and let's face it, if you're playing York, you, uh, you probably should be. Uh, you shouldn't have much trouble killing the ghouls off the following turn, although I admit their uh, their health total is really annoying. You know, barring cards like uh, a Vicious Blow, Lantern, Beat Copper, Guard Dog, 
you're going to need to take at least a couple of actions to take out the ghouls. Uh, three, in fact, if you happen to be wielding the uh, gravedigger shovel. Most of the time the ghouls are, are going to go down after, uh, taking, after you take a couple swings and uh, they really shouldn't trouble you. If you can happen to play Bury Them Deep uh, and remove the, the ghouls from the game, uh, all the better. Uh, you can run into trouble if you draw the ghouls during the upkeep phase while you're already engaged with another enemy. At uh, that point, you really just have to pick which one is the worst enemy and, and focus it down and, and focus on killing it first. If uh, York's had some time to set up, uh, he should have the health and sanity to weather the storm. Fortunately, the ghouls are, uh, aren't that difficult to evade with an agility of two. Uh, if you need to give yourself some breathing room while you uh, sort out the mess you've gotten yourself into. I uh, I can't say the ghouls have cost me a game yet, so uh, I don't get too upset uh, when I happen to draw them. There are uh, quite a few ways to build a, a Yorick deck depending on uh, which assets you decide to include uh, in it. The build that I decided to go with is based on a deck uh, entitled Harvester of Sorrows, which was published by uh, Motux over on uh, ArkhamDB. Uh, Motux includes a great write-up about how to uh, play and upgrade his deck during the campaign, and uh, I highly recommend you head over to ArkhamDB and check it out if uh, you're interested in playing uh, William Yorick. The, uh, my deck is similar to his, but there are a few changes worth noting. I uh, changed up the asset package for my build, uh, opting for two copies of the uh, tried and true machete over the knife for combat. Uh, I considered playing the knife build, but I really didn't like the idea of potentially being defenseless if I failed the combat skill test after pitching my knife into the discard pile. And uh, knife also happens to be uh, vulnerable to graveyard ghouls uh, for what it's worth. I also included a copy of the 45 automatic largely because uh, I test my decks against scenarios from the Dunwich Legacy, and uh, those conglomeration of spheres and avian thralls can be a real pain in the ass to take down, uh, unless you've got a firearm handy. I also swapped uh, the guard dog for Peter Sylvester, who uh, is really a godsend during the, the Dunwich Legacy. Yurik has a, a respectable amount of sanity, but I found I was still cutting it pretty close during uh, certain scenarios due to the horror caused by treacheries like rotting remains. You'd, uh, you'd think that Yorick wouldn't bat an eye at the sight of a dead body by now, but he, uh, he'll he still need to commit cards and have uh, a little luck to pass that Willpower 3 skill test with any consistency. And I find that uh, Sylvester just takes some of that pressure off, especially toward the end of the campaign if you've happened to uh, upgrade Sylvester to his level 2 version and you're getting that plus 1 Willpower bonus as well. Uh, I think Sylvester does such a good job of shoring up your sanity that uh, I might consider trimming the uh, If It Bleeds from the deck in favor of something else. The uh, The deck includes plenty of ways to boost uh, Yorick's intellect. You've got the Lantern, Look What I Found, Lucky, Perception, uh, Resourceful, and Unexpected Courage will all help uh, Yorick gather clues. I did add the two copies of ed evidence to give Yorick a little extra help, although I don't think they're critical. You could certainly cut them in favor of uh, overpower if you're playing a multiplayer and don't uh, expect to do much in the way of clue gathering. Speaking of overpower, I uh, decided to pass on it in this build. That uh, might come as a surprise to some players, and, and I admit it. Uh, I'm not entirely convinced it's the right way to go. But uh, I have had some sec some success cutting it from decks where you're already uh, doing well in combat. Between the 45 automatic, the uh, Gravedigger shovel, and the machete, I didn't have much trouble dispatching enemies while playing some of the Dunwich Legacy scenarios, so I was pretty content with the decision. Uh, some players like having that added insurance that comes with overpower, though, and if you're one of those players, uh, don't hesitate to add an overpower or two to the deck. Now, uh, as I mentioned, uh, this deck was built primarily for playing the Dunwich Legacy scenarios uh, in solo. There are a lot of ways you could change it up depending on your play style and player count. If you want to go with a more offensive build, you could certainly swap Sylvester for guard dogs or beat cops or, uh, or other allies. 
uh, that are available to him over the course of a campaign. I believe uh, Aquina is another option you could uh, pursue. And there's, of course, the Red Gloved Man if you want to go that way. Uh, I think the release of Cherished Keepsake in uh, Echoes of the Path is going to give Yorick a great way to soak up horror. So uh, you could certainly consider swapping the assets around to make room for that card, at which point, uh, you know, if you swapped in Cherished Keepsake, then I would probably swap out Peter Sylvester and uh in favor of of one of the other uh one of the other allies once you've taken care of uh of his sanity so what's it like to play a uh, william york deck well i'll uh, i have to admit that uh, you of all the carcosa investigators york is the one that i've played the least but uh, that's not because he's bad uh, far from it uh, York is an extremely powerful investigator, and he's a, he's also a lot of fun to play. Uh, between his uh, response trigger, his elder sign effect, and cards like Resourceful, your uh, discard pile almost becomes like an extension of your hand. And uh, when I played York, I always felt like I was in control because uh, the answers to any of my problems were usually in my discard pile, and there are usually enough enemies floating around. Uh, during scenarios that it's not too hard to get at them. Uh, pulling the, old, the odd uh, Elder Sign from the Chaos Bag doesn't hurt either. Uh, it's always great to, to go fishing through your discard pile looking for that key card that's going to help you uh, given your current board state. York can pull, up, pull off some pretty uh, stunning plays by shuffling assets between the table, the discard pile, and uh, back again. I think one of my most memorable plays happened when I was uh, testing the house always wins I uh, I discarded Peter Sylvester to gain a couple of clues early uh, moved to another location killed an enemy and then I brought Peter back from the discard pile ready to uh, to soak up some horror for the late game you know generating action advantage is such a key key part of uh, the Arkham Horror LCG and uh, Yorick's abilities help him do that if you're able to trigger his response, you're you're basically getting a free action there, and uh, if you get the elder sign, uh, you're also getting basically a, a free card draw out of it as well. My my only concern about Yorick, at least in solo, is uh, his low intellect. He he can flounder unless he quickly finds ways to pass those investigate skill tests, and uh, even then, you've got to realize that most of his solutions are temporary. Lantern is helpful, but uh, it's not as helpful as I would like it to be. Uh, I'm sort of weighing whether to go back to flashlights, but the the minus one is helpful, but it sometimes it just doesn't seem like it's enough. And uh, Yurik is still going to need to commit cards to uh, to have really any hope of passing most intellect tests. Uh, look what I found, and Lucky can help bridge the gap, but. Uh, I did run into a couple games where I couldn't fail a skill test by two to by two or less to save my life, and uh, those cards didn't really help me all that much. It uh, you know it really might be worth playing two copies of Gravedigger Shovel just for that ability to grab a clue without making a skill test. I just worry that that would get uh, a little too expensive over the course of the game. Overall, I think uh, the designers did a great job with the uh, Concar Carcosa Investigators. All of them are uh, fun to play in their own way, and most of them can hold their own against uh, the scenarios in the Dunwich Legacy. The uh, scenarios in the Path to Carcosa are uh, another matter, I think, entirely. I uh, can't fathom why uh, most of the investigators in the Carcosa uh, Deluxe Box have such a low intellect when the uh, the scenarios themselves really focus heavily on uh, intellect and being able to pass those investigate checks or even the uh, the parlay checks uh, parlay tests against some of the uh, the enemies but uh, I think I'll save that rant uh, for when I start my playthroughs uh, York is fun he's he's powerful and he uh, I think he works really well in solo or multiplayer so uh, the next time you've got a chance to play Arkham Horror uh, try taking a trip down to the graveyard uh, with York uh, I don't think you'll be uh, disappointed by what you dig up. That's going to do it for me today. If you enjoyed uh, this review, I would appreciate it if you could leave me a thumbs up. It always helps out the channel a great deal. Which uh, Carcosa Investigators have you been playing with? Uh, 
Have you had any success with Yorick? Uh, by all means, leave me a comment down below. I always enjoy hearing from you guys. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button to be notified of when I release future content. If you'd like to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at uh, gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.